This is The Backstory with Immobilar Steven. It's a balanced, objective, unbiased and disruptive conversation on government and politics. We shine more light on what has not worked and what would make it work. And now, to the finest personable and engaging host extraordinaire, Immobilar Steven. Tune in. Thanks for tuning into our podcast. We love having you here and it's our mission to bring you all the latest and greatest tips, skills and know-how to make you the best that you can be. We know that you have it in you and we're going to show you how. Now, now let's get started. Good to have you on the backstory with our mobile Steven on the backstory. We like to explore topics and subjects on the government and politics with other subtopics like the society and culture, science and technology, the environment, and also the economy. On the backstory with our mobile Steven, we like to shine more light on what has not worked and what will make it work. We focus on disruptive yet constructive mindset conversations on these topics because we really want to fight what the change and the transformation the world needs in general. Today, I will be focusing on the society and culture, uh, and I have Enric Willinos, who is the author of the book, The Rise of Trilogy, is here to share more light on um, what this book is all about and how the world can benefit, especially for the backstory, Enric Willinos. Thank you for joining oh, me. Okay, thank you very much. Um, well, um, maybe before I, I talk about my uh, bo book in um, special, I, I would like to give you a short background how I came to write about it, write it, write yeah. it. So, um, so um, in my, when I was a young, I, I loved stories about faraway lands and different cultures and different peoples and different religions. And one, there was one story in, in special, um, in particular, that really um, grabbed me. And that was a story of uh, Siddhartha Kautama, later known as Buddha. And what I, how I, I was able to, for some strange reasons, I was really able to um, kind of identify with this man who lived 2,500 years ago. Although we, be, on surface, we came so, from so different cultures, but we shared something. And that was uh, a craving for a meaning in, for, in life. And also this uh, urgency to leave your, nowadays we say safe or bubble or the safe space or, or whatever in kind of kind of in the idea was that go to explore um the world and and see what the, what we really are inside and uh, also use uh, self discipline as a tool so and and quite soon then uh, in my early teens, I then left Finland and and I went to, uh, abroad to go to school in France and and what was kind of my guide in light was always that um, it's not so interesting how I'm different from the others, but what I have in common with others. And I think especially in this very polarized time, it is important uh, not to concentrate what divide us, but what unite us, because we have kind of lost our um our um, ability uh, for dialogue. And this idea of, of a dialogue uh, was kind of the uh, and and how to how to talk about it and what can be done so that people could kind of rediscover the ab ability to dialogue turn me into a writer. My first book was a philosophical take on, or, or it was my take on, on Western philosophy. But then I quite soon realized that people don't read philosophy so much. So I knew that I had to go into the stories. I have to write stories. And how to kind of reach young adults is writing young adult novels. So uh, right, this now, one... you talk about, yes, uh, you talk about um, writing stories. Now, my audience are interested on why really uh, you think 
the world needs tourists that evokes diversity, friendship, human decency, and the courage to listen to one's heart. Can you share that? Yes, I, I think it is, um, well, if we call like in, in like a historical perspective is of course that people are, um, they have lost their patience kind of and in and, and and but historically always also we have had always hard time to have a dialogue with people from different backgrounds and i think anyway as, as a human race we have come forward but you know um but this i think this time is also with all this um apps and so many distractions that that people have a kind of lost their um grounding they are not grounded and so they um they kind of they tend to just uh you know um look for uh, things that really move them and actually anger them that's uh, like anger seems to be nowadays the force that uh, puts people into motion and if that's the force and you know the diversity or understanding different cultures is plays a very minor part in there and and uh, but the thing is that why people have hard time is, is with the diversity is that they don't they don't kind of mirror other people through their own experience uh, what I mean is that, uh, you know, people just look at the, the surface. And if they don't see that we all are actually deep within the same, they get stuck in details. And, and this is a kind of thing that I want to bring out um, in my Rise Up trilogy. Now that it's... it's um, one of the main themes is that there is uh, Islam and modernity. And what I want to show is that actually, um, uh, you know, like unlike normally shown in the Western media, Islam can actually give you tools how to make a change in the modern world and how we can learn how to respect each other and different cultures and, and different peoples so um so this is this is like the i think that, that that's kind of the, like a, the main theme of all my books all these three books Right now, we talk about uh, diversity, but I'd like us to move um, forward to the workplace. Uh, we know that um, life is not complete without relationships. And now the issue of diversity, uh, it's a big, uh, big thing right now um, because we are really struggling with integrating diversity into the society, really. Uh, but let's talk about mm. the workplace culture. How is it really it's been challenging integrating diversity in the workplace uh, and going forward? But in your own well, field of expertise, how do you think that organizations can get it right? Well, <laughs> I think it's a, it um my finding when I when I realize that you know there is something that I look at the world differently for, than the others um I went back to university to study philosophy and I found the culprit it is uh, it's it comes from our like a western uh western um thinking or how we uh, our scientific or any debate it's in aristotelian rhetorics it gives you all the tools how to win an argument but it doesn't say and they doesn't say anything about learning to listen to the other person and trying to understand and this is also it's like we are everybody is competing and wants to wants to kind of show that uh, they are right and they have the right opinion and they have stopped to appreciate other people's opinions. And when you don't appreciate other people's opinion, they don't appreciate yours. And that's a kind of a, 
if that's kind of the, in like let's say workplace if that's that's the um that's the kind of the controlling uh theme is to uh, kind of show how other people are wrong and prove that you are better then there is a uh, very little room for diversity too uh, but really how can we uh, address this well by um reading my book i mean in that sense that i think um you know, when I was writing my my philosophical book, I thought that okay, I can give, you know, I can list things that people can do in order for them to um, learn to better understand themselves and other people. But it is actually that the way that we change our behavior is through heart, and not through rational. I mean, rational thinking is helpful when something has touched your heart. And I think literature or art in general has a great task in this, that they can touch people's heart and at the same time give the rationale behind it, that people can learn new things. But if, if there is no change of heart, people cannot make that change. It's like, Telling an alcoholic to, you know, like uh, uh, that he has to stop uh, drinking. The change has to come from the alcoholic. We cannot make anybody, anybody to change. And it goes, it, it's not, of course, it, it is anything almost, you know, like anything deeper, you know, that, that is, you know, behind our, our, um, the way we act. And it's it's um, there is no uh, kind of a ten step program for for it unless you can feel it in your heart, and that's what movies, uh, literature, music, theater. That's what they have. What 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 they can do. So in her sense, um, talking about integrating diversity or other discussions of diversity is just a waste of time. Is that what you're talking about? No, no, not it's not a waste of time. It's a waste of time if there is nothing that um, that you can co connect emotionally to people. Uh, I think it's 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 important, but be, you know, like in 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 situations that that you have kind of opened your heart, but if it is just um, kind of, uh, it becomes easily, it comes like a rational play where people say things and the things that they want, you know, maybe that they desire, that if, if they are not involved uh, in the process with their heart, the, the um, results are not going to be great. All right, now let's talk about, uh, because really your book, The Rise of Trilogy, you focus on diversity, on gender and racial equity, and also on stereotypes. So that's the main crux of our discussion on today's show. Well, I'd like us to also address our gender equality. Now, this time around, I'd like us to talk about uh, the women folks. Now, the statistics on the status of the world's women, they really show that women have a long way to go before they achieve equality. Uh, do you think uh, this is true? So how long do you think it's going to continue really because it's a boggling issue in the minds of all the women folks out there? Can we ever really achieve our gender equality? I think there's have to be a really change in men before that can, that can happen. Uh, just, um, there's a hope with the young generation. I don't know if we can um, change the any more like the, let's say middle aged people, or even well millennials are also actually quite more tuned to this uh, gender equality, and uh, or e actually gender equity. And um, but but. Um, I think young generations, I have a lot of hope for uh, uh, Generation Z. I think they are a lot more aware 
of of these kind of uh, social justice issues and um, and and they are more sensitive also to these uh, questions and and they uh, have the willingness to talk about it so i see that you know um, that we have the, it will the change will come but it will take time and it needs a new generations that that will make the change why did you say so uh, emmy uh, I think, I think um, I was uh, 15 years, I, uh, for 15 years, I was, um, um, I worked as a volunteer in a Red Cross youth shelter. And it was just, um, it just blew my mind how smart and wise the young people are. Somehow when we uh, get older and, and try to adapt to the society, we got our creativity, compassion, uh, uh, wisdom get diluted, and but I think this new generation, they are not willing anymore so much to go into the same kind of a uh, uh, career path, and 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 this uh, they are not they are they are not uh, they don't want to get rich quick, and they don't. They are a lot more tuned into kind of human condition and 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 to each other. Although it happens also a lot through the uh, social media, but 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 they are a lot. I think they are more advanced than the, the previous generations. Thank you, Emmy Quiddinius, um, for sharing that uh, thoughts with my audience. And so, really uh, talking about. Uh, equity generally. Uh, gender equity can really be useless uh, without uh, racial equity. Now I'd like you to just uh, share your perspective on this. Uh, what's your take? Um, I think it's just um, it, gender and racial equity. I think they are just, a, they are all, it's a, it's, a, it's a kind of same thing that how we, how, what is our attitude towards let's say men's attitude towards women or other um, or 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 other races is i think it's it's kind of a as we advance as human beings we start to appreciate the differences and uh, so i i think i i would say that it's not only like it's not only racial or gender equity it goes to and uh, it it actually affects all minorities because you know we we will learn to see that that you know the things that unite us and and then we are not so divided anymore and and i think young people can do that young generations all right, oh, brilliant. Uh, so, uh, really, uh, how do you think we can begin to beat stereotypes? It's a, it's a big issue, really, uh, especially yeah. in this uh, dynamic times that we have. Uh, stereotypes is there and there in the society, in the workplace, uh, even in the family, right? Within. So, how do you think we can beat it? Um, this is, again, this is a slow change. I can uh, I can point out this difference um, um, that has happened in in the in the U.S. among the um, among the Muslim population is that like 10, 15 years ago, zero percent of the um, of the uh, Muslim population in U.S. accepted homosexuality or LGBTQ+. Plus. But now that it's more than 50%. So it tells that how, when, like how, and one group or one, let's say one race or one religion, how they are integrated into society tells you that they kind of um, open up and 
and can see um the, the, can become tolerant so in a nation let's say like uh, compared to uk the attitudes are uh, among the minorities are actually a lot more um a lot a lot stronger um their attitudes toward minorities the negative attitudes whereas in societies like united states where integration is very uh, important uh, there uh, there is more kind of tolerant tolerance and acceptance toward any minority and so i think that that's a, that's an important thing you know that we we actually in europe have to learn from america in that sense in order to make this place better <laughs> To everybody absolutely eric um your book uh, rightly and this one particular um topic uh which i really are uh, so dear to my heart uh, talking about family expectations as such family expectation we as individuals we have expectations on ourselves uh, sometimes we beat ourselves uh so flat, flat uh, because we fail to meet our own expectations now um the fact that your book addresses family expectations really goes to show that it's an important subject we also need to be discussing at this time. So how can we deal with family expectations, especially in our adulthood age? Well, there is a saying that until you have, be, you have been able kind of to get over the family expectations, in that it doesn't mean that you have to ignore them that you have kind of found your peace with it and 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 um then only then you can have a kind of intimate relationship with someone i mean intimate i mean all kinds in in all spheres and and all this yeah the family expectations are really are really hard on people that oftentimes also the, the individual herself usually takes them uh, or puts more importance than the other people around them. So it's actually often the, the, the problem with family expectation is not maybe the, what family expects, although that is true, but especially in a modern society, that's not anymore so much problem. But it is that we have kind of inherited the family expectations uh, through our education or just we all everybody wants to wants to fit in you know and especially in the family situation so uh, you know we take a lot of um, a lot of a kind of a heavy load on fa family expectations for nothing but of course there is more family expectations always in the minorities where the, when they have not felt uh, uh, kind of uh, that they have they are accepted you know as they are and that you know you can see that in like let's say in among muslims or 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 uh, desi uh, or a lot of the immigrants that they tend to um, go into certain uh, professions, and uh, uh, would it maybe you know medicine or or lawyer or something, and thinking about that, okay, money is a quite equalizer, which it, to a certain extent it is, but but in the long run that's not healthy, of course, because then. A lot of the young people are driven to uh, to professions that don't give them, then that don't offer them, you know, the kind of um, balanced life that that is important for for flourishing. Eric, uh, my audience, uh, I'm quite excited to learn of um, any project you have in the pipeline. Perhaps you have. And exciting news, uh, information you think is going to be beneficial to them. This is just uh, the right time for you to share. 
if there's any. Yes, uh, I would like to give uh, two sets of, of um, audio books um, to your listeners, and um, and I will provide a Spotify uh, a redemption code. So, um, so um, I let you decide how 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 in what form you know you wanna you wanna give them out, but I will provide the redemption codes. Oh, absolutely. And thanks uh, for that, Emery. Uh, we will be include that in the show notes, uh, better for the audience uh, to learn more about. Uh, can you share your social media news on your website so they can learn more about um, Emery Willinos and also about your book, The Rise of Geology? Well, uh, all the information actually is uh, uh, can be found in, in, in my website, uh, Henrik uh, Willenius uh dot uh, com but you can find also um, my books um in amazon and i have also i have also um, made a serialized audiobook podcast uh you find it in uh, any uh, major platform so the if you use just the rise up trilogy uh the name of my book series so that's the way you can also find more information. Brilliant. Uh, thanks for sharing your thoughts. Uh, on today's show, Eric Willinger, you the author of the book, The Rise of Trilogy. Uh, we, uh, your book uh, has a lot to share to the audience uh, if we really want to learn more about this. Uh, we really wish you best of luck in this project, in your book project, and also in the subsequent projects that you embark upon, Eric Willinos. Thank you once again for sharing your time with my audience and your thoughts. Okay, thank you, Mabola. It was great honor to be in your podcast. Right, great honor to have you too, Eric. If you'd like to catch up with any uh, missed episodes of the back series of Mobile TV, remember we focus on government and politics and also other subtopics like society and culture, science and technology, the environment, and also the economy. Now, if you'd like to catch up with any missed episodes, you can do so on any podcast distribution platforms or any podcast. Uh, Cross promotion platforms you bump into, just type the backstory with your mobile receiving. And then you do, do have a great time listening to experts, professionals who share disruptive mindset conversation on topics and subjects on the government and politics on the backstory with your mobile receiving. Till I come your way, I always need you to stay safe. I talk to you soon. This is a mobile receiving. Thank you so much, thank Eric. You. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right. Bye bye. <laughs> If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure you subscribe and leave us a review.